Hi, I'm Rob at Duranglers, and today we're going to be tying a uh, intruder style fly for trout. Um, I call it the Thin Mint Intruder because it's the same colors as the Thin Mint fly that we all love. Um, intruders are come from the steelhead fishing world. Uh, essentially, it's a two station fly, a uh, lot of bulk with not a lot of materials. Um, so, kind of a cool concept and really fun to tie. So, here we go. All right, so first step of tying an intruder is going to be attaching our wire for the hook. So this fly is going to have a trailer hook on it uh, attached with some Senyo's intruder wire, uh, which we have here at the shop. So just laying down a thread base. Uh, we're actually going to cut this, you know, point of this hook off when we're done. So got some intruder wire here. This is the thin size. So always want to make sure you leave enough of a loop to fit your hook, whichever hook you're using, through that loop. Uh, so you've done that before and get all the way done and realize you didn't make the loop big enough to pass the hook through. And then you got to get creative. So I want to make sure we get nice tight thread wraps on this. Sorry, my bobbin is squeaky. And then I like to fold it over itself. Just gives you that extra protection so it doesn't just pull out. And another layer of thread on there just some people glue it I usually don't I've never had one pull out so then we're going to advance our thread all the way up to the eye of the hook um, and we're going to add our eyes on put the eyes on the underside because I want this fly You know, to ride a certain way. So just nice X wraps, get those eyes nice and even. Sometimes on these long shank hooks, you gotta kind of hold it so it doesn't wiggle around too much. Okay, those are nice and secure. Now we're gonna go back to the back of the hook. Laying down nice even thread here. So we're gonna start with a dubbing loop. Just a short one, don't need it to be real long. Um, so just make a loop in your thread. So just a couple inches long and we're gonna take, uh, we'll use some Arctic Fox is typically what you would use um, for our dubbing loop at the back here. And we're going to mostly use the under fur. So we're going to cut it off the hide. Remove guard hairs. And start to spread it out a little bit so we can stick it in our dubbing loop. So open up your dubbing loop. material in there. Just kind of spread it out so it'll get bunched up if you don't. And then start twisting. There's a lot of different tools you can use. Dubbing loop tools, paper clip with this heavier thread. You can do it with your fingers too. You want to get it nice and tight traps all of that hair in there. And then when you're about halfway done I usually like take a bodkin 
You want it. The idea here is to get those fibers to be longer. And we don't need a lot. Just need enough to make a little ball at our back station here. And what that's going to do is help to prop our other materials up. So just a couple wraps, tie it off, clip the rest of your dubbing loop off, make sure it's tied down, then we're going to go through with our bodkin again. All some of those fibers that are trapped picked out. You can use a dubbing brush for this too. Um, I find with these natural furs, the dubbing or the bodkin works a little better. Sometimes the dubbing brush isn't stiff enough. Push all of that back. You know, wet your fingers to keep it back. Now we're going to take some strung guinea in red. I've pre stripped these um, so that we can, kind of like you would tie a soft tackle, we're going to tie them in at the tip. Here. Just in front of where we wrapped back on our box. And we're going to wrap this just like a soft tackle in front of our ball of fox. These guinea feathers have a really cool pattern on them. I like the red and black a lot. Makes a great, you know, kind of gill plate-ish color. And once we're done, we're going to Tie off the stem. Again, we're going to take our bodkin, kind of make these fibers get stuck together. I want them to kind of be nice and spread out all the way around the hook shank. And then we're going to pull them all back. Just make a couple turns, pushing those fibers of that guinea back. You know, as big as a profile as you want to kind of have. So if you want a larger profile of your fly, don't tie them back quite as much. Kind of tire's choice there. So that's going to be the prop that holds up some of the front material as well because those fibers are going to be stiffer than say like a marabou. Now we're just going to tie in some flat braid. I like gold. It gives it a nice flashier look. And that's going to be our body in between the two stations. Just covering up that thread base there. Tie it off. Same thing, we're going to do another dubbing loop here for our front station. Same thing, just going to use some olive box. And you can use a variety. Some people use dubbing, um, some different synthetics, but 
I like the Arctic Fox. Makes a nice prop. Start working on getting those fibers spread out. Seems like we're kind of, you know, crowding the eye here, but that's the idea. You want to finish, you want to have it kind of wedged between this dubbing loop, your other material, and the eye, the hook. So that's tied down good, same thing. We got our bodkin, a little picking. Same process as the back one. We're going to do some strung guinea here. Pre stripped on one side that I did, just like do a soft tackle. And now we're going to add some material over the top, and this is just uh, some marabou. We're going to palmer the marabou, uh, so we're going to tie it in towards at the tip, and then just make a couple turns. We want it to be pretty, this fly to be pretty sparse. Um, we have that nice prop to help keep it, you know, with a bigger profile. But with marabou, especially palmered marabou, less is more. Allows that marabou to really breathe and swim, which is what we want out of this fly. Let's tie it in the tip. Okay, we're going to kind of fold it. Wrap. Again, we're gonna use our bodkin to kind of pick out any. Maybe kind of wet my finger, kind of. Push it all back. I'm going to clean up tips of these feathers where I cut it. Looking pretty good. Just going to add a few. I like a little black in there, so we're going to. Find a couple strands here of ostrich. You don't need much, just a couple. around our fly do four what's called 
four stations. So essentially we're breaking the fly up into quarters, top, bottom, and each side. Cut off all of our tips of our butt section, our ostrich. Okay, then I'm going to add just a couple pieces of peacock curl. Kind of staying with our theme of a thin mint, which is a kind of woolly bugger with its black, olive, and brown, and a peacock body. So just a few pieces of peacock curl on the top here. Peacock has that nice iridescent look to it, so. Always a cool addition to any fly. And then the last part of an intruder, and these are optional, uh, traditional is to have some hackle and as horns on the top of the fly, they call them. And so I have some, this is a whiting freshwater streamer neck or saddle. Um, and I have stripped the tie-in point on these guys and you know selected matching feathers from either side of the saddle uh, or at least you know close to matching so that they line up nice and we're just gonna cut our tips off we're gonna kind of make some thread wraps here at the head to kind of cover up some of our tie-in make it all nice and clean looking then we will whip finish then the last step of this fly will be to get your cutters cut the point of the hook off actually cut the whole bend of the hook off. It doesn't trap those fibers. And then we are also, now we're gonna add our stinger hook to it. This is a Gamagatsu octopus hook size six. They make these in a bunch of colors. Uh, Regular silver is just fine as well. So you're gonna pinch your wire. Sometimes it'd be kind of hard to get through the eye, but it will fit on these. Just gotta really pinch it down through the eye of the hook and over the back of the hook. Pull it tight, and there we go. Those hooks are extra sticky, and there's our trout intruder in thin mint colors. Our hook's a little long, but not too bad. Um, yeah, there it is. Nice airy, uh, but you know, fairly bulky pattern. Uh, cast pretty well and fishes well on a two-hander you can even you know strip it if you want to but prefer to swing them just that nice airy pattern it really breathes well uh, on a nice slow swing thanks for tuning in